Nobody wins when the family feels. I ain't no nigga run with a big gang. Caught the body of the week out the couch time with no aim. I'm not the type to go from nothing strange. Home side if you think it's a gang. Looked at me and said, Bitch, you look like you him. What you told her? I am. Good. Man, that's cause you too soft. What? says an inmate at Smith State Prison in Glenville killed a worker yesterday morning and then died by suicide. The head of Georgia's state prison system believes the firing and arrest of former warden Brian Adams deals a major blow to a contraband operation inside the prison. The dollars are five, I'm talking about $29,000 they brought into the state prison system. Georgia Bureau of Investigation Director Vic Reynolds says the case involves a convict, a corrections officer, now fired, contraband and cash lots of cash approximately twenty nine thousand dollars tons of phones knives contraband drugs you name it they find it the staff member tells us extreme short staffing has helped inmates run their operation with hardly any worry about getting caught and some officers are fearful to investigate we are allowed to do what the inmates allow us to do we go home every day by the grace of the inmates a lot of times we look over these things, like how the jail's being operated, the inmates actually controlling it. Recently, a young mom had lost her life to the hands of an inmate. Now, we'll later discuss, it seemed they was allegedly in a relationship, and it also seemed that the perpetrator took his life as well. He was an aspiring rapper, which we'll later break down in the video. But there's some important facts about this state prison alone. It seemed in the last five years, they've been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Even the warden was recently fired. It's getting so bad in some of these facilities that the gang members is having associates apply for CEO jobs, making it even more difficult to tackle these problems. So in this video, we shine light on this state prison, give love and respects and condolences to some of these people who lost their life while associated with this prison and see if there's anything being done about the recent havoc. So before we go over this one, remember, I don't give you no angle, I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're gonna jump right to it. Family Smith State Prison in Glenville, Georgia. This is also a state prison that was also known for a gang inside the prison who controlled it. A gang called the East St. Laurent Gang. And after doing my investigation myself, within the past three years, this prison been connected to a number of incidents. One was a murder of a delivery truck driver while he slept in the bed with his young daughter. Two, a botched murder for hire that left an innocent 88-year-old man dead. Three, a contraband, aggressive correction officers as the intended target. Four, an attempt assault on a correctional officer as she drove to her home. Five, an arrest of a female correctional officer trying to smuggle $29,000 in cash to a gang member for bribery. Six, a murder of an alleged accomplice. Seven, an inspiring rapper serving 20 years managed to shoot another jail worker, a female, a young mom who supposedly they was in a relationship with, but he used a firearm. And how can he use that? Fam, here's the timeline in chronological order. In March of 2019, Nathan Weeks is transferred to Smith State Prison in Glenville. Weeks, who also, in his mid-20s, has been incarcerated since he was 14 years old. He was sentenced to prison at the age of 16 for his role in a string of armed robberies in Metro Atlanta. He meets fellow inmate Christopher Reginald Sumlin Jr., who was serving time for burglary and possession of a firearm of a convicted felon in Coweta County. And on October 1st, 2019, Brian Adams is named the warden of Smith State Prison following a summer full of riots and extreme gang violence in Smith State Prison, which resulted in a host of murders inside the walls as well as dozens of criminal indictments for the riots and violence. August 24, 2020, Dale Drick Jones used a drone to drop off methamphetamine onto the grounds of Smith State Prison. Court records suggest that Jones was recruited by Jessica Gerling and Nathan Weeks. On October 5, 2020, Christopher Regional Sumlin Jr. is released on parole from Smith State Prison after serving six years on his eight-year prison sentence. Following his time on parole, he'll serve 12 years on probation. And then on January 13, 2021, in Wayne County, Jerry Lee Davis was murdered in the bed where he was asleep with his young daughter. His wife and other children were home at the time. Davis was employed with McDaniel Supply Company, where he drove a delivery truck that frequently delivered to Smith State Prison. GBI Regional 14 Kings Island begins investigating this case. Indictments were later alleged that Christopher Sumlin and Jessica Gerlin killed Jerry Davis. 
January 30th, 2021, Bobby Kicklighter is murdered in his home in Glenville. The 88-year-old man was discovered shot to death by his family after the alarms on his home were triggered and the alarm company could not reach him. Mr. Bobby had no ties to Smith State Prison or GDC. GBI Regional 5 Statesboro began the investigation in this case, spending approximately 17 hours on the scene on the first day. Just two months later, March 31st, 2021, in Liberty County, Alicia Rubin, a correctional officer, Officer for Smith State Prison was rear-ended in Liberty County and had a gun pulled on her, which was fired at her at least once. When she flees, she is chased by a man until he crashes into a car while she in Records later revealed that the man chasing her was Christopher Regional Sumlin Jr. He was arrested roughly one week later in Coweta County. And on April 20th, 2021, Irene Moore is arrested for trying to bring in $29,000 into Smith State Prison as a corrections officer. Moore was hired by GDC in March of 2020. Court records later revealed that while GDC and CID were searching Moore's vehicle, a cell phone was discovered ringing from a call inside the prison, who was later determined to be Devion Wilder, an inmate from Smith State Prison. Wilder, who was calling Moore on the cell phone, was Moore's boyfriend. He was also later determined to be a top-ranked member of the gang inside the prison, East St. Laurent who was running in jail. On June 28, 2021, Jessica Garland is murdered in a mobile home in Long County. Garland has ties to Wayne County, but lived in Brunswick at the time. She worked for Georgia Department of Corrections from February 2020 to July 2020, before she was fired for bringing in contraband into Smith State Prison. She was also in a romantic relationship with the inmate, Nathan Weeks. On August 23, 2021, the GBI had announced three arrests in the murder of Bobby Kicklighter. Keisha Janae Jones, Jones who was a former GDC employee who worked at Smith State Prison. Instead of being fired in 2012 after it was discovered, she had an ongoing relationship with the inmate, Jones was permitted to resign. According to records from the Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council, Jones was also under investigation for contraband-related issues at the prison. At the time Kicklighter was murdered, Jones was in a relationship with the inmate, Nathan Weeks. The next person was Ariel Deshaun Murphy. Murphy lived with Jones and worked at her boutique in Highsville at the time of Kicklighter murder. Jones was also once married to Murphy's uncle. And Christopher Regional Sumlin Jr., the 31-year-old, is a former Smith State Prison inmate. And on August 25th, 2021, the GBI had announced that Smith State Prison inmate Nathan Weeks has been charged in the murder of Kicklighter. Sometime prior to this date, Weeks was moved to the Special Management Unit at Georgia Diagnostics and Classification Prison in Jackson, Georgia. The facility is supposed to be among the most secure in the state as it's one step down from death row. And trust me, fam, the public will later learn that the security of SMU is just as lackluster as Smith State Prison. And on August 30th, 2021, the GBI announces Christopher Sumlin has also been charged in the January 13th murder of Jerry Lee Davis. In the following month, on September 22nd, 2021, Sumlin, Jones, and Murphy had a bond and preliminary hearing. The GBI agent, Christian Johnson, the lead case agent for the Kicklighter murder, testified that Kicklighter murder was a botched murder for hire. Murder for hire plot, the three suspects charged in the January murder of a Glenville man appearing in court today. As our Brooke Butler discovered, this appears to be a case of mistaken identity. A Georgia Bureau of Investigations agent took to the stand today revealing shocking information about the murder of 88-year-old Bobby Kicklighter. He said the intended target appears to be Kicklighter's neighbor, a corrections officer known for cracking down on contraband. And the fact that um, Mr. Kicklighter drove a white pickup truck, which coincidentally is, is the same as the corrections officer, um, he was the unintended target. In the early hours of the morning on January 30th, the GBI says Bobby Kicklighter, a beloved member of the Glenville community, was shot to death in his home. During a preliminary hearing Wednesday, GBI agent Kristen Johnson revealed Kicklighter was not the intended target. He said four people identified as Ariel Murphy, Christopher Sumlin, Keisha Jones and Nathan Weeks, who is currently incarcerated at the Smith State Prison, had instead plotted to kill a corrections officer who used to live next door to Kicklighter. There was a, uh, a conspiracy to have this corrections officer harmed for the purpose of removing him from seizing the contraband inside uh, Smith State Prison. During Wednesday's hearing, Agent Johnson went over evidence the GBI had collected that he said ties the suspects to the murder. He mentioned that a camo mask had been found at the scene. 
The GBI collected it and later found Sumlin's DNA on it. For context, Sumlin is the one accused of pulling the trigger. Agent Johnson also mentioned they had acquired a series of texts exchanged between the suspects that he says vaguely mentioned their murder plot. He also said the suspects went to great lengths to cover up any evidence in the case. At the end of today's hearing, a judge denied bond for both Murphy and Jones. However, he granted a $750,000 cash bond for Sumlin. And that was enough because the state investigation into the contraband scheme inside the prison resulted in the arrest and firing of the prison's warden, Brian Adams, in February of 2023. He was charged with racketeering, bribery, and making or writing false statements and violating his oath as a public officer. WTOC exclusive with a Smith State Prison employee who tells us contraband is just one part of a bigger criminal operation inside the walls. We told you about two weeks ago that the warden had been fired and arrested on a slew of charges, including racketeering and also bribery. We've also told you investigators say they believe the crime ring was the motive of a Tattano County murder. The employee tells Ardell Kennedy how rampant they say the problem really is. While the arrest of Smith State Prison's warden may have surprised many around the state, one employee from inside tells me you and I would be shocked at the criminal operation going on behind that fence and inside those walls. Even with the arrest of now former warden Brian Adams, an employee who spoke with us still did not want to be identified. They said contraband comes into the prison at an alarming rate. It ranges from tobacco to high-end shoes and clothes to gaming systems, but those are used for more than fun. This staffer tells us inmates hack into the prison's internet and use the games to navigate drones, make drops over the prison fence. What was coming in the drones was the hard contraband, the drugs, the, the cell phones, the throw over the fences, all that type of stuff. That was, that was what that was. This staffer believes others besides Adams are in on the ring or they're placed in positions they aren't experienced to handle. It was shakedown, they find tons of phones, knives, contraband, drugs, you name it, they find it. The staff member tells us extreme short staffing has helped inmates run their operation with hardly any worry about getting caught, and some officers are fearful to investigate. We are allowed to do what the inmates allow us to do. We go home every day by the grace of the inmates. Investigators believe at least one murder in the area connects back to the crime. They believe an inmate placed a hit on a corrections officer, but his partners killed 80-year-old neighbor Bobby Kicklider by mistake. But it seemed that wasn't enough because in the same prison in June of 2024, an offender to go by the name of Jay Drieke's heart had smuggled a loaded firearm into the kitchen and fatally shot a female kitchen stewardess three times, once in the head and twice in the chest, before allegedly taking his own life. Now, rumors suggest that the two may have been romantic involved and that the kitchen stewardess recently ended their relationship leading into the horrific act. Authorities include an attack. It happened 4 a.m. in the morning. This is the second staff member in the last eight months who lost a life at Smith State Prison. The female victim was identified as Ariane Grace, 24 years old and leave behind two children. May she rest in peace and love and condolences to her family and most of all love and prayers to her kids as well. To speak to the attorney for Ariane Grace's family, the 24 year old was killed while on the job at Smith State Prison Sunday morning. Investigators say inmate Jadrika's heart shot Grace and then himself, leaving behind a suicide note. WSCV Sarah Smith is in Glenville today. She's taking a closer look at conditions inside the prison. News 3 learned that the pair had a personal relationship, but the attorney for Ariane Grace's family says investigators should be more concerned with how a gun got behind prison walls. The firearm in the prison system is beyond me that I can like, comprehend. How a firearm got into the hands of inmate Jadrika's heart is the question on the minds of Ariane Grace's family. Their attorney, Malone Hart, sharing their devastation after the death of the young mother of two. The GBI is trying to say that Ms. Grace was involved somehow. However, there, there's no way that she could have brought it in based off the security she has to go through. It's the security elsewhere that's lacking, and um, we believe this firearm was actually brought in prior to her ever working there. 
The family claiming they have not been treated with respect by the Department of Corrections or the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. He says Grace's loved ones found out about her death through social media, adding that the GBI destroyed her home during a search on Monday. They still have questions about her relationship with inmate Hart, but they say she did not deserve this. There's no way that a family should lose a mama or a, a child, a daughter, uh, because she's in a bad relationship. The, the focus should be on the system acknowledging that they should do some stuff, uh, take some precautions to stop stuff from this like this from happening. Grace began working in the prison kitchen in January. Inmate Hart was serving 20 years for voluntary manslaughter out of Carroll County with a maximum release date of June 2043. A current employee blames Warden Jacob Beasley and Commissioner Tyrone Oliver for not cracking down on contraband. News 3 kept this employee's identity anonymous since she claims to have received several death threats. The inmates are running the prison. We're just allowed to be there and we're allowed to go home every day by the grace of the inmate. She has worked in the prison system for almost 15 years, most recently in the mailroom. She says Grace should have never been put in a deadly situation. There should be an officer running that kitchen and supervising what's going on, and there should be no guns in, in the institution. It should be an impossibility. This incident is still under investigation. Now, this is the second killing of a staff member here at Smith State Prison in less than a year. You may remember last October, correctional officer Robert Clark was killed with a homemade weapon while escorting an inmate. Reporting in Glenville, Sarah Smith, WS. It's a very unfortunate situation. Seemed like this prison got no form of structure. And everybody but the staff is running it. We send 11 prayers to all the victims we just talked about in this story. Fam, this was the story of a Georgia inmate who wants to be a rapper, serving 20 years for manslaughter, who decided to allegedly, according to the people who work there, who are doing the investigation, smuggled the firearm into the kitchen, four in the morning, and killed this alleged ex-girlfriend after she broke up with him. Everything about this situation sound a little off. Let me know how you guys feel about this one in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, I'll catch you guys on the next one.